Kwemi, it's great to have you on the show. It's always great to have you here. And I want to, first of all, get your perspective on the premise of this call. I mean, mm. is, it, is it a constitutional issue? Is it... And because clearly, when you're threatening somebody with impeachment, it's a mm. serious, serious mm. offence. I think it would be naive to think this is all about the implementation of budgets and uh, strict enforcement of the Constitution. I think clearly there is more at play. You can trace it a long way back to the inauguration of the House of Reps itself. Mm. The political differences between the, 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 the faction of the PDP in effect and the opposition who have formed alliance in the, in the House of Reps in particular and the presidency. You remember that it was not the nominee of the presidency that won the speakership. The, the, the faction of the PDP essentially allied with the opposition to win the, the House of Reps speakership. But then you can also find a remote cause in the problems of Farouk Lawan, who is a pillar of sorts within that faction of the House that controls the National House of Representatives. Mm. And I think clearly his friends and colleagues are not happy with the presidency, who they believe probably had a hand in his problems. I think there's also a direct connection with the constituency allowances, right. which the members of the House of Reps uh, usually insert in the budget as it were to take care of themselves. And, and I think this year there's some demand for some rigor and due process and some delay in processing those constituency contracts. And I think those three for me would be where to look hmm. for causes of this conflict. There are clearly a lot of politics going around there. Uh, but the, uh, when you look at the history of mm. budget implementation in Nigeria, it really raises the question, why has it historically been difficult for the government to fully implement? Because in the past, we've seen implementation um, of, say, maybe 40 percent, 50 percent. So Especially on the capital side. Exactly. I, I, I think there are, there are both um, constitutional and capacity issues. Um, the constitutional issue being that generally the process of budgets, we still have to resolve the roles of the presidency or the Ministry of Finance vis-a-vis -vis the role of the National Assembly. One of the perennial arguments we had, and we had it throughout Obasanjo, we had it with Yaradua, and now it's the cause with Jonathan, is that the House essentially writes a lot of things into the budget, mm. which the executive probably has reservations about. And now, one of the consequences of writing something into the budget at the House is that you don't have a cost, you don't have designs, you do, you've not gone through a process of tendering or due process due or procurement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And therefore that process starts after the budget. That is if you put aside the reluctance of an executive who has been forced to accept something in the budget that it really does not consider a priority. All right, let's round this up by mm -hmm. getting your perspective. Where mm -hmm. will all this end? I, do, you, do you see a compromise somewhere or do you I, think I, 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 come September, because they will be back by September, by September. going on, on break now. I, I, I clearly believe that there's no, there's no, it's not realistic to ask for 100% budget implementation at any time, least of, least of all in September, three months to the end of the year. So there has to be some compromise of some sort. Now, will that compromise be the Nigerian style in which we give them what they want and everybody is happy? Or will it be a principle-based compromise? That remains to be seen. But for me, I don't see this as a strict constitutional issue that uh, deserves um, all the attention it's getting. All right, thank you so much. Uh, few words, but very important words. Thanks so much, Opa Abaje, uh, CEO at RTC Advisory Services, giving us a perspective on the war of words, light war of words between the presidency and the National Assembly around the um, execution of the 2012 budget.